Hey, Varsity Reynolds here. Just want to remind you that Mint Mobile has been offering premium affordable wireless for the past five years. Hey, Ryan. How would you feel about us buying you out? No way, Jose. The big carriers like you are bloated and anti-competitive like my nephew. And most of our customers left a big carrier like yourself in order to appreciate a more lean and efficient carrier that could offer a lot of those savings back to the end user. Have you started, uh, filming Deadpool 3 yet? Well... Uh, no. Because I'm sure it's not cheap to have Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine. <laughs> we haven't, uh, we haven't quite, uh, locked down his contract yet, but, uh... I'm sure after Logan, he knows he's worth the, uh, big bucks. All right, Mike! I get it, I get it, but I'm not gonna betray our most loyal customers by selling out to Big Wireless. Should, uh, 1.3 billion dollars do the Holy trick? crap, did you just say billion? I did. Sorry, guys, but, uh, I don't want Deadpool 3 to be a good movie. I want it to be, uh... Great movie. <laughs> we got gotcha. you. Oh God, Ryan, you were the chosen one! You were sent to destroy the big carriers, not join them! Oh, sorry, this gets over now. My apologies, but yeah, this was uh, rumored to happen a few months ago and I was really, really hoping it wouldn't come true because I don't like when the carriers just keep merging and buying each other out because this kind of defeats the point of having MVNOs in the first place. I would love to see how Antitrust feels about this because in case you missed it, T-Mobile has agreed to acquire Mint Mobile and my first reaction to that is like, oh god, what are they gonna change? And I watched their announcement video, and so far everything seems to be kind of vague. The concerning part is the CEO and Ryan basically saying that they are going to keep their $15 a month plan. But what does that mean for all of the other plans Mint Mobile is offering? Yeah, it's kind of too soon to say. I mean, I'm encouraged that they want to keep that around, but I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, does this mean that all Mint Mobile customers all suddenly become T-Mobile customers? I don't think it's actually going to to work that directly, similar to how Verizon also owns Visible, but Visible has like a whole separate website, separate billing, a separate account, separate email and password and everything. It's just using the Verizon network. I think that's probably how this is going to work. Similarly, T-Mobile also owns like Metro and Ultra Mobile and other stuff like that, and they don't necessarily merge them all under one blanket, so it's not like we all suddenly have to become T-Mobile customers and pick from one of their plans. It's just all of the money that Mint Mobile makes, I guess, is going to go back to the big corporate overlords. But now that they're such a major player, which is a extreme conflict of interest because a ton of Mint Mobile customers are probably former T-Mobile customers, they get to decide how good of a deal Mint ends up to be. In regards to coverage and service, not much should change because Mint Mobile already relies on the T-Mobile network, but if T-Mobile wants to make Mint Mobile feel like not that great a deal, they have the ability to kind of start eliminating some of those extra perks, whether it's the overly and incredibly generous referral program, or if they no longer want you to compete with the unlimited plans that T-Mobile is offering, that's kind of the indication a lot of people were feeling off of this announcement, because all they said was that the $15 a month plan would stay, which, I'll be honest, that is a really good plan. It's like four gigs a month, and pretty much all of my friends and family that are using Mint Mobile are on that lower tier, because most of the time they can just use Wi-Fi anyway, but there's absolutely, I'm sure, a ton of people on the 10 gig plan, the 15 gig plan, and the unlimited plan that are wondering if their prices are going to change or if their promised data is actually going to be delivered on. And I'm kind of freaking out right now because T-Mobile's not necessarily clarifying what all of these plans are going to change to. I'm also incredibly curious what's going to happen about the Bobby Badia plan, which in case you missed it like a year or two ago, Mint was basically letting you buy 25 years worth of cell phone service up front for a really cheap fee, so basically $2,500, which sounds like a lot, but once you consider that that $2,500 covers you for 25 years, it ends up being like eight bucks a month or something like that. But over 100 people signed up for that plan, and as we were talking about it, I remember thinking, hey, like, you're kind of gambling on the future of this company sticking around and continuing to offer you service, so that's why you really gotta be careful with the fine print on that one, and now that T-Mobile 
is buying them out, I wonder if the terms of that plan may change. Like, are they going to continue offering that same fixed locked-in rate? Or are they going to say, eh, actually, we're under new management now, we don't have to honor that anymore. That's really going to suck and potentially get into lawsuit territory. So my hope is that T-Mobile can be smart about this and depending on who I get on the line, I can have a great experience with them because I do still use T-Mobile home internet or I get a terrible experience with them if I talk to the wrong person on the phone. So this acquisition of the whole company is supposed to take a couple of months. So it's not instant quite yet, which is why I don't think there's really any mention or any changes regarding to Mint on the website, at least right now. But this was almost like perfect timing because I've been on Mint since 2019 and my one year membership like just renewed a week ago. So if they do get rid of the unlimited plan or they change the pricing for it or whatever, I'm probably one of the last people that's going to be on it at the older pricing because as of right now, I'm locked into their old rate until March of 2024. So I really hope that they don't change the fundamentals of the company too much. And this is just another way for T-Mobile to maintain revenue, even if they don't have to maintain the customer base. So fingers crossed that this doesn't turn into the big corporate overlord thing where they just kind of force us all to become T-Mobile customers and they raise all our prices. But yeah, ultimately, I still don't feel too confident about all this because the big carriers are much more bloated. Like, I agree with that. And one of the ways that Mint Mobile was able to be so affordable was because they didn't have overly complicated marketing campaigns and they didn't have a bunch of brick and mortar locations, which I'm in favor of. I don't think phone service needs to be so complicated that it requires physical locations all across the country. I would prefer it be all online and try to be cheap internally so that it can be cheap for all of their customers. So selling out to the big carriers like they are right now after convincing a bunch of people to leave the big carriers, yeah, that definitely makes me feel like is your best interest in favor of what we get or is this just another way to fund Deadpool 3? Honestly, I'm still really excited to see the third Deadpool, so I guess we win some and we lose some, but either way, even in the best case scenario, it still just makes me feel a little bit icky that after dissing on the big carriers for so long, they were willing to go back and just say, yeah, okay, we'll just join them anyway. This is like the Mark Zuckerberg approach of business. Like, okay, here's someone that's really competing with us. Here's someone that's really stealing away a lot of our customers. Let's just buy them out. That way we get all those customers back rather than actually try to make more competitive cell phone service with lower prices that can beat out the competition. No, let's just buy them out. That's what Meta did with WhatsApp and Instagram, and now it feels like T-Mobile's doing that with the Sprint merger and acquiring other MVNOs, but given Visible is already owned by Verizon, it's like, I don't know, even if they shut down my plan and force me to sign up for T-Mobile or something, I don't know who to go with now, because all these MVNOs, anyone that's gonna offer any kind of legitimately good service that I switch to, they're probably just gonna get bought out next year anyway. So maybe this is where antitrust should be focusing a bit more attention instead of just the iOS app store. But what do you guys think of T-Mobile buying out Mint? Are you nervous? Are you gonna switch away from Mint immediately? Or are you gonna stick on them for a while? Feel free to let me know your plans down below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. This is your App Shape here, and I'll see you in the next one.